So Canvas or panel, how to choose the best support for you. So this question should be familiar from the quiz. How much attention or emphasis do you place on texture when you paint or look at other paintings? Um, I think this is pretty clear. There are a whole lot of options um, when you're looking at any sort of aspect of painting, uh, you know, in regards to material or even painting technique. Um, I'm giving a suggestion here to start with ampersand panels if you like the way my work looks. The reason that I, uh, or the way that I came to that decision was that I don't like um, regular, uh, like artificial, well, I don't like the regularity of really strong canvas weave. Uh, it's, it's very absorbent when you paint on it. And I'm kind of a thin painter. I like to paint indirectly. We'll talk more about that another time. But that means that I like to play off of the background. I like to lay down a layer. I like to have it sit sort of back in the canvas. Not, I, I, like, I like to be able to create planes uh, on, on a canvas or a panel. Now, I'm not saying that no canvas works for that. What I am saying is that a lot of people, when they're starting to paint, will go to their local kind of more like craft art store. And because uh, you're insecure about your painting skills, which is understandable, you'll start with, you know, just the cheapest line of canvas, which is certainly not going to do you any favors unless you are more like a palette knife painter, in which case you probably didn't find your way to my course. So um, that being said, it can make a really big difference on how professional your work looks. So uh, when you look at other paintings, try to notice, like, are they ones where maybe for you it's the opposite? Maybe you like really heavy duty canvas weave showing through or a really regularly factory looking textured um, panel because you can buy those so more about that in a second but anyway the quickest the, the the quickest thing is my fast suggestion is if you've only tried those cheapo canvases please try working on panel and see if it makes your work look finer with very little added effort and probably very little expense added to it to be honest um okay so this is a shot of kind of like a close-up of a couple of recent paintings of mine. I want to show you the difference because I still experiment, and you probably will find that you continue to experiment too with materials. The point uh, that I'd like to make, I just like to help people shortcut the, the years of experimenting by giving quick feedback on what I've tried and what the result was. Um, so on the left is a, is a typical Timian uh, this one does happen to be done. This is done on an ampersand gesso board. Um, I do coat my own panels sometimes. Um, you know, I don't think that's something that, you know, if you, if you want to talk more about that later or have me add that as an advanced, um, advanced talk, then certainly let me know so that I know that you have a question about it. But at this point, we're going to just let that part go. Um, so yes, the one on the left is kind of my traditional working method. I'm happy with it. The background lies behind the objects that I'm painting. I can build up paint body rather quickly. You can see that with the whites, uh, like the high, white highlights on the um, pot, the little flower pot. That's the easiest place. Now, on the right-hand side, we see a, um, a metal composite, aluminum composite panel that I bought from naturalpigments.com. I was experimenting with it. I believe that this one may be, I, th I think you get a choice of either like an eggshell finish oil coating on a panel, a prepared panel. And then I, there might be one that's like linen on panel. I think this may be the linen on panel and I really don't care for the effect. You can see it's very ripply. Um, it was dreamy to paint on, like the paint, it sat back just like I like it to do, which means it wasn't consistently butter textured no matter what I tried to do. Like I like the backgrounds, as I said before, to feel like they're in a plane behind the objects. That was easy to achieve with this. What I did not like is that um, the bumps, the, the sort of factory looking bumps 
showed through really well in my finished painting. So I will not be purchasing that. Now this is not a technical flaw on the part of the manufacturing. It's excellent quality. Um, so, you know, if you paint thickly, you might like that. If you paint thinly, you may want to stay away from that. Onward. Second question on the quiz was, how large do you want to work? Now, is like from a, you don't have to worry about this right away. I, I want to, so I'm not even going to talk about this very long, but I will say that archivally speaking, paintings done on panel or firm support or paintings that have been mounted to a firm support last much, you know, they last longer. Canvas and linen, uh, or excuse me, canvas, which can, can be cotton, linen, flax. Maybe there are people paint on other things as well. Um, I think silk, for example. But uh, the thing about the cloth textile supports is that they respond more to humidity changes in their environment, and they're obviously more um, puncturable. So keep them away from knives and sharp objects. Um, it's, it's not like a huge, huge concern. Obviously, we have paintings that are quite old that are preserved on canvas and linen, but they take more work from conservators. So, you know, that's something to worry about when you feel like, um, well, maybe not when you feel like it, but when other people judge your work to be um, like something that they are going to, if you're selling it, let's put it that way. If someone's paying for it and paying a particular amount, you want it to be something that will last more than their lifetime. Okay, um, <clears throat> that would be just sort of like good business ethics. But we aren't gonna worry about that a lot. That being said, have the freedom to choose what you want because there are some canvas options that will you know, make it more preservable and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But, um, okay, so when you're working very large weight of the, so weight of the, artwork becomes a consideration. Um, that's why there are foam core custom panels that you can buy where like the, a linen has been placed over a heavy duty foam core. I have tried that and that is remarkably durable. I'm quite impressed. Um, some people like Jamie Wyeth, I, I went um, and saw a show of his a couple of years ago and some very large paintings were done on panel. Again, you have warping considerations. So um, check on that, check back with me because you'd want to be sure and paint the back, um, kind of um, put a coat of polyurethane or a similar option on the back and the edges of a panel to help fight warping that might come from moisture, uh, moisture coming through the sides in the back of a painting. Anyway, if you work large, um, you're going to want to be more careful about how heavy your panel is, or you may want at that point to choose to work on a um, on a canvas, and you can buy some heavy duty bracing structures. And I would recommend doing that runs into a little more money. But again, if you're someone commit, you know, where you just love working large, you're, you know, going to have to research this and figure out how to handle that. Um, anyhow, I do, I do both. I do work on uh, linen canvas and I work on panel. I like how my work shows on fine linens and panels. And I, you know, often use panel for simplicity now, but um, sometimes it's just basically mood ba mood based. Larger paintings like commissions, it's um, I I'm leaning more toward a panel or supported panel because I don't want to be running to people's homes, um, and restretching them um, because again they will respond to humidity. Even linen, which is less responsive supposedly than cotton, does respond to humidity. All right, uh, another quick thing that I have a time saver that might help you. Um, a quick thing that I've learned is um, when you're shopping for panels, you have some different thicknesses. The previous slide I showed was, um, you know, like very small, very small paintings um, and sketches I often do on the completely flat. They're like the one eighth, one eighth inch, basically just the board. And then I often coat the backs to help 
and the edges to help weatherproof it. Um, again, create a humidity barrier. Uh, the other options you have are going to the, oh boy, um, is it a, it's around, around an inch, inch thick, maybe three quarters. I think I'm pretty sure this top panel is um, in this in this image is a three quarter inch um, panel, and it's called um, what's it called? It might just say it's called cradling, but I don't think in a catalog they're going to necessarily call it a cradled panel. But anyway, it's made you know in construction more like a uh, you know, kind of like a stretcher bar would. And it does add support. You can see the thin layer of the panel that's that's glued on to the top of the quote-unquote stretcher bars behind it. Um, both of these are constructed that way. The panel on the bottom in this picture is a two-inch deep panel. Um, I've run into a little bit of problem. I tried that because I thought, oh, it's heftier, and it is. It's more archival which it probably is. The problem I ran into is it does not frame traditionally. You can either paint the edges of those panels um, and just hang them, you know, kind of a contemporary raw look without a frame. You can frame them in um, floater frames, which is very popular. Some of these things, though, remember, are framing trends. They may not be as hip you know, in 20 years or 10 years as they are today. Um, anyway, when I went to, but but this this is, let me get to the point here. The point is, is when I have paintings done on the narrower, more traditional panel, like you see on the top with the started painting, and when I paint things on the wider two-inch deep panel, um, when I frame them, I have to buy a special frame, a build out, a build out on a frame for the thick one, and they don't hang as well with traditional, traditional, what do I say, traditionally deep works, like a, a traditionally framed work. So those frames stick out from the wall like two and a half inches, whereas the average frame for the average painting depth is, you know, like an inch, maybe, you know, inch and a quarter might be kind of typical. So I kind of created a little bit of a problem for myself. Like I don't want to do part of a series on the um, on the shallow one and another part of the same series on a thick one because they just aren't ever going to hang well right next to each other. Okay. Um, budget considerations. Again, there isn't a huge difference between a budget panel and a budget canvas. Maybe there's no difference. To be honest, I have not personally researched this because I'm kind of stuck on certain brands and, and ways of proceeding. I will note um, that even the metal composite panels, which cost more than the wooden, wooden panels, um, because they do not respond to moisture in the same way, so that makes them more archival than wood. Uh, you don't have to coat the backs, obviously, of the metal panels because they have an incredibly efficient moisture barrier. However, I did notice that the front corners um, of all panels, uh, including the metal panels, are prone to chipping. With, uh, and, and you'll want to really be careful. They'll get kind of like shelf wear more easily. Um, that being said, um, I think that you can be fine. You, you know, I think they're, like I said, they're a student grade panels. Um, so I I think, you know, that you can find kind of an equal starting point budget-wise for either choice. And then you can work up to more expensive things when you have more confidence. These are some pictorial examples of what I've been talking about. The far right with the wrapper that says 8 by 10 on it, that is a metal composite panel from Natural Pigments. It's their, oh, I have it in the notes, um, Artflex. I think it's called Artflex. Artflex series. This particular one is eggshell finish. And if you look really closely in the bottom 
corner. You can you can kind of see an eggshell te um, texture. I'm very happy with that. I have not worked on one of those yet, but I'm excited to try it. It looks very similar to what I'm used to, which is the um, kind of pinkish panel on the right or close to the center. And that is a um, that is a ampersand gesso board, and I have put a very thin um, a, a thin imprimatura of a natural like reddish color on it. Um, it would it comes white uh, anyway, but the texture is very similar to that, and I've done a lot of great paintings on ampersand. On the left, you see the art flex other board that I have tried painting on, and I showed you a painting a little floral earlier, a corner of a kind of a bright blue flower, uh, daffodil flower painting, and it's very bumpy. I really dislike it. I, I don't know what I'm going to put on this one. Um, anyway, so this is what it looks like again with just a reddish imprimatura, and the bumps are a bit too much for me, and they're regularly spaced. I don't like that. On um, the very far left, you really can't see it, but that is a hand-coated, um, or that's, a, that's an ampersand panel that I've added a little um, quick-drying white to, and it's built up a little more texture, in, but with brushwork instead of bumps. Okay, so those are some good examples. Um, quick note on canvas options. Again, I do use canvas. I don't like large paintings on them, um, are a little bit difficult to handle. Um, even with bracing, I have found, but, um, you know, it wasn't, the masters used it. We have made progress. We shouldn't look backward just because someone great managed to deal with the problems they were handed. But um, that being said, canvas is canvas. It's traditional. Um, it's beautiful. The texture, you can really fall in love with particular particular textures. Frederick's brand makes a good series. Um, if you aren't sure where to start, I'd call them kind of middle of the road price-wise. Um, linen, I already talked about this, but linen is, you know, responds to moisture less than cotton does. I have never had trouble with cotton canvas, though. I, I will just add that, but because um, I work archivally and um, I do portrait commissions and things. I try to use the best materials for, for that sort of work. So um, I do use linen. I really like Claussen's Style 13, single primed. Um, you can buy it in double primed. My experience, my personal experience with any double primed uh, linens is that the surface is a little bit soapy. And I cannot get the first layers to sit back well. In other words, all of the brush strokes fight, fight for dominance in my work. And I, I don't personally care for that. But that is, again, that's something if, if that actually intrigues you when you hear me say that, then maybe that is something you will want to try. Um, and the next page is the sources. Um, actually, I do. I see under uh, at the bottom of this slide, it does tell you that it's Utrecht. Um, that's where I buy the Claussen's linen. And Utrecht is happy to send you a sample set. I think probably most um, send away mail, mail, um, mail order supply companies do this, but they have a kit or a, um, an envelope of samples, canvas and linen samples that you can request. It costs like $5 or something. Totally worth it. Okay, um, this is an example of canvas weave um, as opposed to panel. And this is done on that single primed style 13 Claussens. So I always paint on fine canvas um, and it doesn't eat up my brushes and it doesn't eat up paint like the really hefty ones do. Okay, I'll finish off with recommended suppliers. You can also, if you um, don't want to leave this, this slide open, you can also download this supply list um, at the bottom of this lesson. It'll have the download spot for you. And um, again, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about this. And I hope that this was not overwhelming and yet helpful at the same time.